Welcome to another jam-packed edition of Edinburgh Fest Live. Yeah. We are coming to you live from the biggest arts festival in the world, and we're here at Newtown Theatre on George Street in Edinburgh. Don't forget, if you want to be part of our live studio audience, you can. We're here every day, 1.30 to 2.30 during the Fringe. Now, I've got a little quiz question for you, because you know I love a bit of trivia. So the question today is, how many factories in Russia make iron brew? That's how many factories in Russia make iron brew. You can send us your answer via Twitter. Just go to at edfest underscore live. You can also head over to the website sbctv.co.uk. And don't forget, there are hours of brilliant episodes just like this one on YouTube. All you have to do is search SBC Edinburgh Fest live. And there's lots of entertainment there for you. Today, we have a brilliant lineup of comedy, magic, stand up. Oh, it's going to be brilliant. So uh, I think we should welcome our first guest, don't you? Please give a massive round of applause for Dave Annick. Hey, gang. Hey, I'm Dave. Hey, huge studio audience. This is going to be great. I was going to do a magic trick. Do you want to see a magic trick? Yeah. Thank you, three of you. Right. <laughs> Can I? I'm going to borrow some people. For example, who have we got? Uh, the lady there with the glasses. Uh, actually, everyone's wearing glasses, I think. You right there. Yeah, dark hair. Yeah. Can I get you? Come here, right here. Give it up. Come on. Get to you. How are you going? Hi. Thanks for coming. What was your name? Sean. Sean. Hi, Sean. I've got a deck of cards here. Do you want to mix those up? Yeah. Shuffle them up, change the order. It'll be fun. Yeah. Wow, you're really good at shuffling. I should have picked someone else. <laughs> doesn't matter. doesn't matter. You're great. You smashed it. That was brilliant. <laughs> do, you wanna, do you wanna do me a favor and take one of these cards out for me? Anyone you want. But don't show me. I want you to show everybody else. I'm gonna turn around, okay? okay. You show everybody else. Show the camera as well. Promise I won't look in the monitor over there, because I'm not bad. <laughs> and then hold it against your chest for me, Sean, so I can't see. Have you done that? Yep. Good. I'm gonna do this. Say stop. Beautiful. Put your card back for me. Good. Do me a favor. Don't forget what it is or it'll be shit. Okay? Cool. <laughs> Let's give it a little mix. Oh, I can do that too. So, <laughs> magic. Check it. Shazam. Was that one yours? No. That would have been so good though, wouldn't it? That would have been amazing. <laughs> Hold the four of diamonds for me. Watch this. One hand. Did you see it change in her hand? Have a look. Show everyone. What? <laughs> give it up for Sean. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Woo! See, you thought I was going to be shit. Uh -huh. Turns out I'm amazing. So, <laughs> how you going, gang? <laughs> Hello. Self-confessed amazing Dave Annick. <laughs> 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 so, Dave, tell us a little bit about your show this year. My show expect? this year. I've got two shows this year. I'm doing a show at half past five at the Voodoo Room Speakeasy, a free show, and it's called The Cult of Dave, and I try and convince the whole audience to join my cult and make me their sort of leader and god on the basis of my clearly amazing powers. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what could we expect if we were to join the cult? If you were to join the cult? Dave. A few things. Um, devotion, mainly to me. Um, <laughs> uh, and I do, in the show, try and teach, albeit a little bit vaguely, because mostly what I do is uh, more mind-reading stuff, you know, like the Darren Brown, that kind of thing, a geeky version, but that. And I talk about how it works, and I try and sort of show people how it works, so hopefully people learn stuff as well, you know? So you can learn in your cult. You can learn. <laughs> and you be can... devoted to you. It right. sounds amazing. It's a crazy, it's like, it's like backwards joining. cult. Please do. Please do. <laughs> I'm joining. Um, so I hear some of your impressive reviews have used the F word. What's that about? <laughs> What's that about? People, I don't know, feel like they just need to swear when they look at me. <laughs> do you swear a lot in your show? Is I this do part swear of your quite cult? a bit in my show. I, I sort of wish I didn't. I think my mum really wishes I didn't. But, um, but I don't know, I just get really excited. And sometimes, like, oh, poo, just doesn't work. You know, you need to, you need to really give it some shit. And is your... <laughs> 
Do you? Uh, yes. Uh, is your mum a member of your cult then? I hope so. I, I think I've never asked her. You know, that, I'm gonna I'm gonna Family give her a call after this. Family members should be the first to they join. Should be, they should be. They had all of the t-shirts when I got them for it, which is just my face, by the way, in case you didn't realise. Uh, yeah, they, they were walking around Edinburgh, just the four of them, mum, dad, and my little sister wearing all my face. All in your t-shirt. Yeah, it was lovely. It was it was a bit creepy actually, but it was really nice. It's good to have a PR team yeah, exactly. with you in Edinburgh. Exactly. So, uh, how did you first come into sort of magic? How did you discover it? Uh, well, that fits quite nicely into my second show, which is on at nine o'clock at the Liquid Rooms, because after I did the Cult of Dave, I did the Cult of Dave last year. I've brought it back this year, and the most common question I was asked was, "How did you learn? How did you start doing what you do and all that?" And I thought I'd try and demonstrate how I learned in the new show, like from being a really little kid, starting to do card tricks, and then building up into sort of the mind reading, sort of psychic, all that stuff, you know? Uh, yeah, I think it was just arrogance as a child, really. I needed attention, <laughs> desperately. I saw a book on card tricks and thought, that'll get me laid, let's try that. Wow, and has that worked? I mean, honestly, yes, but I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna, no, no. Ladies no, 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 in the no, studio, no. we're having to hold them back. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, do you, are you in a relationship now? I am, and I the really hope she doesn't watch this. The interview's gone weird. You are, and did you meet, did she see you on stage before? She didn't. I think every successful relationship I've ever had, they've not seen me perform <laughs> before we've went out. That's true. That Why is, do you think that is? I don't know. Um, mainly, maybe, because, you know, you'll find this, uh, like, I suppose every performer will find this, when you perform, it's not that you're a different person on stage, but you're definitely a version of yourself that you can't keep up all of the time, that sort of positivity. And then you meet someone, they're like, oh, you're really good, and like, thanks. And then socially, slowly, the sort of horrendous depression or something will set in, and then they'll be like, oh, you're a bit, you're not, you're not that all the time, are you? I'm like, no. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they fall in Don't love with your stage persona. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Whereas if they meet me off stage, it's nice, because then they can be like, oh, you're all right. Oh, no, you can do tricks as well, that's great. Yeah, I'll, I'll go for a drink. And, and comedy magic as well. How, yeah. did, how did you find match, ma mixing the two together? Because a lot of comedians are very serious. Yeah, yeah, I'm terrible at being serious. I really can't. A lot of magicians are really serious as well. Um, especially when they do the kind of mind reading stuff, people like to take it quite, quite sort of seriously. And I've never been able to do that because I just think magic is fundamentally silly, really, isn't it? It's just kind of fun. And I started, I did an acting degree, and when I graduated that, I lived with two guys called Jolly Boat, fantastic musical comedians. If you ever, if you get to see them, they've got a great show. And we grew up together, and they did the comedy circuit, and I sort of joined them, you know, sort of doing stand-up for a while. And then, uh, and if a joke didn't get a laugh, I'd just do a card trick, you know? And then, you just kind of find your way from there, I think, you know? I think I go for funny first, more than magic. Yeah. Really? So if you had to pick one? If I had to, I mean, I love doing magic. It's really, really fun. But I also love when people laugh. I think that's, it's the best feeling in the world, isn't it? And if you can get that, that's, then you're on a winner. So do you think one day you might give up the magic and just go full? I don't know. I did that for a bit a few years ago. I sort of put the cards down and started just doing stand-up for a while. And it was fun, but I really find it hard to write. I can tell stories. I quite enjoy like just telling people the funny things that have happened. But I'm, I'm so impressed when people like yourself and stuff can just write jokes. And I'm always, how did you think of that? How did you put that <laughs> on a piece of paper? I can't do that. So I, I tend to use magic as a bit more of a, what's the word I'm looking for? A gateway into, it's a gateway drug. To it's find the gateway the drug you know? of comedy. Yeah. That's brilliant. And, and, how, and how do you learn magic? If there are anyone out there thinking, oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to be able to do those card tricks. Is there a school? Are you in the inner circle? <laughs> is there a book you can buy? Is there, there is. There's my book, 10 pounds after my show. Hello. Um, <laughs> not a joke, guys. It's called 666. I teach six magic tricks that you can learn and six life lessons to be more like Dave. <laughs> and, and six reviews of burrito restaurants in the UK because I ran out of ideas, but that's the best part of the book, I promise. Okay. It's the best part is the burrito. No, but you can learn. I think I had a magic set when I was a kid. It's kind of like a hobby that you don't get out of. Some people pick up a guitar and I picked up, you know, a deck of cards. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think Hogwarts exists yet. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the day. <laughs> and no. is, is there an inner circle? Is that a real thing? There's a magic circle. There's a magic there's circle. A, there's a few magic clubs sort of around. There's the International Brotherhood of Magicians. That is a thing that wow. exists. Right. Right. <laughs> the names are the best thing about them. There's no great. I'm not part of any of them. I, I, I probably should try and join. And I've got friends who are part of the magic circles that, that have asked me to sort of, um, that I should try and join. I think it's just laziness, you know what I mean? Like pure laziness. I probably You've should get You've gone rogue. I've I like gone it. rogue, yeah, yeah. I'll tell people our stuff's done. That's the worst thing. People always come up to me after my show and they're like, oh, how did you do that? 
And sometimes I like I come up with my own magic, and so I don't mind giving away. The, I don't want to give away the secret. Obviously, that's my job. But if I get drunk, I'm always just like, oh mate, it's well easy. If you just, you know, and I shouldn't do that, should I? Quick, get him a drink. <laughs> we'll find it all out. <laughs> so, how many Edinburghs have you done before? This is my sixth year coming up to the festival. Wow. Yeah, yeah, quite a while. Quite a while. Uh, not as long as some, but more than others, I suppose, yeah. And, and what do you think you've learned from doing all those Edinburghs? Do you think it's made you a better magician and comedian? Definitely. I mean, you cannot, you cannot like, substitute three weeks of doing two shows a day, or sometimes three. I did, like, three shows a day for the last two years. I brought it down to two this year. You can't substitute that kind of learning process, can you? Because you've got to get up. You've got to do the show. And there will be days where you wake up and think, I don't want to be here. I don't like anyone in this room. <laughs> That's never true. You think that, and then you get on stage and they're like, oh, no, thank you so much for coming. This is actually really, really nice. But, uh, but no, it's an incredible learning experience. And I think any performer should definitely try and do it. And with things like the free fringe, it becomes genuinely possible for people to do it instead of having to, you know, pay, obviously, the, the, a lot of money that it can cost to come to the yeah. festival can really reduce those costs. So that is a fantastic thing. Yeah. And so have you done six years in a row? Yeah, six years in a row. How I, do you go about writing new shows and coming up with new <laughs> tricks and... That's it, isn't it? Like, um, I think the first sort of three or four years, I was doing not the same show, but it had the same title and I would evolve it each year. I'd sort of do some of the same, but then introduce new ideas that I had. And then last year was the first year I went, right, I want to just blank slate, I'm going to do entirely new stuff. And that was The Cult of Dave, that was the first show. And I brought that back this year. And the new show, Mind Wizard, this year is that same idea. So I'm trying to just, you know, every year, scrumble up the paper and go, right, blank sheet, Brand what new. can we do now? Yeah. Brilliant. So tell us where both of your shows are on and we can come My see My shows are on at the Voodoo Room Speakeasy, which is uh, at half past five, and the Liquid Rooms Warehouse, which is on at nine o'clock every day, every day. Brilliant. Dave Anik, everyone. <laughs> That's it for part one. We'll be back in part two with our celebrity cook, Harry Mary, and some comedians. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>